For men, there are a lot of things that are driving our estrogen levels up. Okay? Alcohol consumption drives it up. Stress can drive it up. Uh, environmental factors, lots of different plastics, things like that can all have a role. Like BPAs, they all play a role in estrogen levels. One thing that we are starting to see more and more of though, is that it's not so much the low levels of testosterone that are a problem with men. I mean, yes, that's a problem, don't get me wrong. But in terms of like depressive symptomology, mood, things like that, it's the higher levels of estrogen that seem to be the issue. So how can we quickly start working to get these estrogen levels down? Well, we have to understand a little bit of how estrogen works in the body. First of all, men, we produce estrogen in the testes and in the adrenals, okay? And we produce it in a couple different forms. There's estrone and there's estradiol. Neither is necessarily good or bad. They all have a role. But when we start seeing these numbers climb up and our testosterone levels being lower, it's that gap, that ratio, that really is the problem. So the main reasons that estrogen is high in men are going to be just excess body fat. Okay, so that's the simplest thing. Body fat is like just a perfect housing unit for estrogen. So number one, and I know it's simple as heck, is to lose the weight, okay? But secondly, the insulin resistance piece is something that people overlook. It doesn't matter your weight. If you are insulin resistant and not good at metabolizing carbohydrates, insulin resistance can increase estrogen levels. And this leads to another vicious cycle. So one of the most powerful things that you can do is to take a little bit of a break in terms of either your carbohydrate consumption or start limiting the time in which you eat foods. One of the things that I would suggest that men do for an estrogen modulating effect is compress your eating into a 12 hour window. So stop eating at like 7 p.m. and don't eat again until 7 a.m. What this is doing is it's allowing yourself to regain a little bit more insulin sensitivity because by consistently bombarding our bodies with food, particularly refined carbohydrates, we are secreting insulin all the time. Okay, this constant insulin secretion is going to, I guess for lack of a better term, burn out your pancreatic beta cells. They get a little tired of producing insulin, but you also have peripheral insulin resistance that's occurring at the insulin receptor level and the tyrosine kinase pathway, which I don't need to go into a lot of detail there, but essentially the cells in your body become less good at using glucose and become more insulin resistant. This indirectly can skyrocket our estrogen levels. But let's talk about quick things that you can do to start to correct this. For one, a fiber rich diet. Now you don't have to go overboard and turn into a total granola hippie. You don't have to do that. But getting a diverse amount of fiber, chia, flax, getting your veggies in, things like that, just having it be diverse, really is one of the more powerful things that you can do that we've started seeing in the research over the last couple of years. Our microbiome has something that is called the estrobilome, and it sounds like an arena for weird sports or roller derby or something, but no, it's actually a part of your gut that literally metabolizes estrogen. We have bacteria in our gut that work towards feeding and cross-feeding on different fibers to ultimately break down estradiol, and particularly 1,7-hydroxyestradiol, 1,7-beta-estradiol, the estrogens that could be considered bad. They get broken down and then they get excreted. It's that simple. So if we have a more diverse microbiome, we can potentially metabolize the extra estrogen because what happens is when our estrogen levels climb and we can't excrete them, they get put right back into circulation and it doesn't work upon the same feedback loop where if we see more, we stop producing it. We can still produce it. So that can be a very big problem. Probiotics can potentially help with this as well if you have a good one. I put the one that I recommend, there's a 15% off discount link for Seed. They're a daily symbiotic. What that means is they have a prebiotic and a probiotic. So it's like a two in one kind of thing, like literally has a capsule inside of a capsule. I am not suggesting that a probiotic is going to fix your estrogen levels. It's not what I'm saying. But when you are talking about increasing the diversity of your food to have a more prolific kind of like breadth of gut bacteria, a good probiotic that is built properly, like seed, could be largely beneficial. So it certainly doesn't hurt. And people ask which one I would recommend because a lot of them out there are not very good at all. So this is the one that I recommend and probably the only one that I would put my stamp of approval on that's out on the market right now. So that 15% off discount link is down below in the description. The next thing, limiting alcohol consumption at least a few days per week. This is really fascinating stuff. So what happens is your liver has to prioritize alcohol metabolism, okay? When you consume alcohol, 
and it converts into what's called acetaldehyde. That is a toxin. Duh, no surprise. We know we're drinking poison when we're drinking alcohol. I know it's hard to accept, but it is. So the liver deals with it, okay? The liver breaks down the acetaldehyde hastily, and that means that everything else takes a back seat. Well, you know what else the liver breaks down? Estrogen. It metabolizes estrogen, and if it's busy metabolizing alcohol, especially all the time if you're drinking a lot, that runs, that's a serious issue because then the estrogen ends up taking a back seat and it accumulates more and more and more. Not only that, alcohol itself is estrogenic. So you have a double whammy. You have the alcohol contributing to estrogen, but then you also have the alcohol inhibiting the metabolization and breakdown of estrogen. Another thing that you may want to consider doing is at least one to two servings per day of cruciferous vegetables. These are things like broccoli, bok choy, cauliflower, maybe some baby kale. There's a number of different cruciferous vegetables. A quick Google search will help you out with that. They contain some weird gobbledygook stuff that's called indole 3 carbonyl which a derivative of that is going to be something called diendolomethane or DIM. You can also take DIM supplements. I don't recommend just pumping yourself full of a bunch of different supplements, so probably better off getting it in a bioavailable food form, but if you don't want to eat broccoli, there are supplements out there. You could do, again, an Amazon search or a Google search for DIM, like D-I-M, okay? Now, what this does is it helps, once again, with the metabolism of excess estrogens. And it does a pretty good job of sort of regulating what excess is, okay? Because it goes through that different process to be excreted. So it helps with the excretion process. You might also notice that when you start taking something like DIM, your water weight drops a little bit. It's one of the better diuretics, if you ask me, because I think that a lot of times we retain water as a result of estrogen imbalances. That's why when you look at people that have huge estrogen imbalances, or even women that are kind of going through the estrogen phase of their cycle, or when they're going through perimenopause and estrogen levels are high and progesterone's low, they retain water, sometimes gain 15 pounds of water. Yeah, well, DIM could be something that could help you out with that. So just Keep that in mind. The other piece that I started to talk about before was limiting carbohydrate consumption. It again comes back down to the insulin piece, a very, very important piece. Okay, you don't have to go completely zero carb, you don't have to completely go keto, but if you're working towards improving insulin resistance, you may want to keep your carbohydrates in check. And if you can't keep your carbohydrates in check, then you want to at least increase the exercise to compensate for it. Okay, the more that you move your muscles, the more that glucose can get sucked up into muscle cells. If glucose is actually sucked up into muscle cells, you have less glucose floating through the bloodstream. Less glucose floating through the bloodstream means less constant bombardment on the cells from insulin, thereby improving insulin sensitivity, thereby improving estrogen levels within our bodies. Now, you can take other supplements and other things to try to improve testosterone levels, but when we start looking at the research, I think we are seeing that for men, most of the symptoms outside of the fatigue, the libido, the muscle piece, the depression, all that stuff is coming from the estrogen side of the equation. So pay close attention, implement these things to try to get rid of some estrogen, or at least trim it down a little bit and see if it improves it. See you tomorrow.